I Ho Young Jung, Look is Unique, Analyzing Celebrity Faces, Episode 9. It's on both screens. Without further ado, let's get straight into the video. Y'all see her looking at me? You may know her as Squid Games Player 67. I've seen her in a couple of fashion weeks in the past, but the answer for why she's so attractive is actually really quite simple. She's extremely symmetric, more so than most models, with a masculine facial width to height ratio. In other words, her face is very short and wide with a mix of neotenous or juvenile and dimorphic features and above average dentofacial growth. In short, she fits Western ideals of female beauty more so than the Eastern ones, and I'll explain what I mean by that in just a bit. If you're new to the channel, we break down beauty in a more scientific way using research literature, so strap in, I'm going to explain why each of these points contributes to her unique but quite intimidating look and why in Squid Game, her look worked so well in depicting a cutthroat rogue character. To start off her analysis, let's talk about symmetry. Symmetry is important in modeling for a number of reasons. From an evolutionary psychology point of view, researchers such as Gillian Rhodes have identified it as one of the fundamentals of an attractive face. A symmetric face is an indicator of strong genetic health, but more importantly, a symmetric face is one that's free of any malocclusions, malformations, or disruptions like cleft palate, which link back to poor genetic health indicators, as we've covered in our full breakdown on the different types of symmetry over here. The symmetry component is also partially influenced by your upbringing. Healthy dentofacial development is influenced by the diet that you eat, and as we've covered previously, 75% of asymmetries occur in the lower jaw, unsurprisingly because it's subject to a lot of uneven forces from all directions as you start chewing hard and soft foods. So having symmetry is a double benefit, it indicates strong nature and nurture qualities that you would want to pass on to your offspring. From personal experience in the modeling industry, symmetry is really important for frontal shots, which is much more important in print and editorial, not so much for runway because in fashion and runway, you're going to be gone in a second, so nobody's really assessing your symmetry while you're walking on a runway. Mastering the perfectly symmetrical dead-on look is also very difficult because a lot of models, minor eyelid asymmetry or jaw asymmetries are very common. So having a perfectly symmetrical face, even in a group of some of the most symmetrical faces on the planet, is a big factor in looking strikingly different. Oyeon also has an unusual facial dimension. Unusual in the sense that it deviates from the Korean beauty standard of thin, narrow, and tall face shapes, in other words, the oval face shape, as we've covered in our East Asian beauty standards video. Her face is actually more masculine with increased malar or cheekbone problems. Y'all see her looking at me? I'm looking at you too. To me, personally, and I'm a, bro, my style is like no other, and I got multiple styles. I'm, aside from that, she's top five of all time. I don't care about y'all that come out the woodworks. Are you tripping? You ain't got no ass. I'm a face kind of guy first and foremost. Face, what? My first son gonna be named Itachi. I can do that with these. Miss Ho Young Jung. And Young Asayo. She she top five of all time. My most beautiful females I ever seen. And I seen uh oh. There's no word in the English context to express it. For it's unutterable. For it exists as an entity in lanes which transcends all material words or symbols. I've seen everything with four syllables. I've seen extraterrestrial females as well. So everything of all time i've ever seen she's top five and she ain't five she ain't three either yeah down to the le <sighs> yeah, she different Let's continue. Prominent, which funnily enough is something that many East Asians get reduced in what's known as malar reduction surgery to achieve a narrower face and that oval face shape. An oval face shape increases impressions of trust. Kim K, you like what you like, you feel me? Kim K ain't fucking with whole young junk and I don't 
you can take away her past and she could be conservative curving them Kyrie Irving don't hurt them as well you still ain't fucking with Miss. Ho I don't, I don't want to compare. You feel me? I don't want to. But you, nah. She top five, and she ain't five. Miss Ho Young Jung. She top five, and she ain't five. Yeah, she top five, and she ain't five. These faces. What they said? It's the Korean beauty stuff. You ain't fucking with Ho Young Jung. She top five. Trust and femininity at first glance, whereas her facial dimensions have quite the opposite effect. So despite not fitting the Korean or East Asian standards in theory, her features fit very strongly with beauty preferences in the West for female models, most of which, if you'll notice, have wide and more masculine appearing faces with greater dentofacial protrusion. This very characteristic of a wide but short face has been identified in the research literature as far back as the late 1980s as having a high facial width to height ratio, which is a masculinizing feature that makes the face seem much more intimidating. However, instead of using the traditional facial width to height ratio, a facial index ratio is better at showing what I mean as a facial- I can wake up to these every day for sure. I'm loyal, I'm conquering my nature. I wouldn't give a damn. I got these by my side. I don't give a fuck about what no other female on the planet is doing and what you doing with them and what you plan to do with them. I wouldn't give a fuck. I just want to get me and mine. We we, we doing our thing. Fuck the world. You heard me? Straight up. It's just me against the world. Yeah, I just want mine. I ain't no nigga that need more or want more than my fair share. I'm cool. Y'all can have y'all. So may you get what you want in life, Caillou. I know what I want. Yeah, just get me and mine out the way. I wouldn't give a fuck if the world on fire. I got me and my my mine. We good. Yeah, I can wake up to these every every morning. I don't even like to use that word morning. For sure. I didn't skipped over. You can have the dumb white blondes. I don't want that. Hell nah. I see what jo the Jonathan Majors and the niggas before him what they went through. Before that, the what was that, the Emma Teal? A lady lied and said he was staring at her a type way, and then she ended up coming out before she, did, did she die? Came out, nonetheless, they be lying. Even aside from that, they Amber Heard's to me, doing weird, nasty shit I don't fuck with. So it's like, I skipped over they ass, but these, and trust me, I'm in character while I'm on here. You got to find a message in a glass bottle, nonetheless, is there. I know how to conduct myself around what I want. I'm to I'm different in person, IRL. But yeah, this is some words don't even describe this. What I see, yeah. Width to height ratio is more concerned about the dimensions of the mid face, and the facial index considers the dimensions of the face as a whole. Having a wide face not only stretches the cheekbones out to have greater malar prominence, but also stretches the eyes out to look narrower and wider, assuming that the face has healthy and proportional dentofacial development without any hypertellurism or other abnormalities. Guys, let me know in the comment section who is the top five most beautiful women you've ever seen in your life. Or what's your favorite race of females and why? What you like? Let me know in the comment section. I'm reading everything. I'm curious. I want to know. Researchers such as Genio et al. have identified that higher facial width to height ratios make faces appear much more untrustworthy, but also intimidating, which is exactly how Ho Yun was portrayed through Player 67. As you can imagine, this makes the face intimidating, much like the eyes of a Jaguar or- This might be my costume for next Halloween, 67. I love her to death. And what I mean by that is I value her to life. But when you say you love someone to death, that feeling, that emphasis, the vibe behind it, it's like it's deep. Like, yeah, like, it goes just beyond, it goes beyond her looks as well, too. It's more to it than that. It's like. And yeah, Squid Game is what put me on to her. I know she was in a, I think, top model back in Tyra, Tyra type days when she had a model show going on or whatever. But I really got hip in Squid Games. 
And it's like, she look how I feel. My default setting and how I feel. And this picture says a thousand words. Competent. Capable. Numb. Stoicist. It's, it says a bunch of things. You've been through the ringer and just like you just completely just you get what I mean it says a thousand words though but nonetheless how she look is how I feel by default on the daily so it was that on top of her role and how she acted this shit out and her beauty too of course I'm a visual creature but yeah it's deep it ain't just her looks no nah, not at all and she looked like someone that will come with me it's crazy as hell that the other girl said that I thought that when looking at the shit before I'm like bro so I'm not the only one that think like this because the writer wrote that in there for her to say that. That's crazy, but it's about the viewer and how you interpret it. But that's how I interpret it. Everybody else may not get it. I get it, and that's all that matters. Let's continue. Or some other predator. An idea which we've covered in our analysis of another model, Jordan Barrett, with an equally wide and intimidating face. I feel as if at this point I've covered everything on the channel for you guys to just come up with your own analysis. Quite recently on the podcast, I spoke about the concept of averaged faces. In other words, a composite of many faces together looks better than an individual face on its own. However, the most attractive faces actually deviate away from the averaged faces. Pay attention to the wording there. This is because the most attractive models, particularly women, have above average dentifacial protrusion as identified by Peck and Peck 1970. This is a concept that I've never actually talked about explicitly, but have hinted at in the past and perhaps you've noticed this yourself when looking at female models in their castings. Most western models have very defined dentifacial features and jaw sizes and dimensions that can almost rival their male counterparts. In the east, model selections are much more cute and soft with less protrusive dentifacial features and this is simply because of different beauty standards. Hoyeon falls into the former category, giving her that dominating and intimidating look, but with a number of soft and neotenous facial features that can still make her appear quite feminine. Most women on She got some nice full lips on her as well. She ain't got them, the, the Karen lips. You know how the white females don't be having lips. Like she, to me, she perfect. Average will have less defined jaws and forward protrusive dentifacial growth than their male counterparts. That's just how it is. However, those that do not produce more striking and intimidating faces that Westerners tend to find more attractive. From Peck's paper, Miss Massachusetts 1964 on the top right, and virtually all of the other beauty pageant winners all have very wide faces with relatively narrow and masculine eyes. This isn't to say that they're more attractive than narrower oval shaped faces and rounded feminine eyes that you'd see in the East, but this is an American beauty standard with a preference for masculine dentifacial structures and wide bizygomatic widths. All of these faces have very defined inferior mandible borders or jaw lines and protrusive lower jaws that line up with the glabella or the base of the forehead indicating a normally projected jaw. Women typically tend to have more retrusive jaws that fall just a bit short of this line but not these exceptional examples which are considered some of the most attractive women for their time. Having a more retrusive jaw like the average woman is expected to have makes the jawline appear less defined as the skin and soft tissue is not stretched as tightly or tautly and makes the face appear a lot softer, less intimidating, more submissive, albeit a bit more feminine too. On the contrary, above average faces have longer mandibles, oftentimes with greater gonial width or jaw width for both men and women, which is why the likes of Margaret Robbie to Ho Yoon, despite her being a Korean actor and model, so a not Caucasian like in these examples, are so captivating to a Western audience. Peck's paper defines facial harmony as an orderly and logical flow of facial features, which is a very subjective term. Personally, at Coves, we define harmony using proportion tests for our facial aesthetic reports, some of which we've actually covered here. But looking at Ho Yun's side profile, it's very clear to see that her orthodontic profile has a very pleasing balance with her soft tissue profile. In other words, one particular facial feature does not dominate over the others such as a prognathic or protruding jaw. Lastly, her face has a lot of neotenous features, which is why it's softer and rounder than typical models. Facial neoteny refers to the presence of juvenile features that influence the way that that face is perceived. More babyish faces with juvenile features, such as a youthful hairline with no frontotemporal recession, or a high hairline and rounded forehead, 
may be taken less seriously and are obviously less intimidating, which is not what we want for her role in Squid Game. Buckle fat is informally referred to as baby fat as the volume loss in this region is one of the more notable signs of an aging or maturing face. You can also get it surgically removed early on to give yourself a less neotinous face like many celebrities and models do, but to be fair, I don't actually know if Margaret Robbie had the surgery done or she just aged naturally and gracefully in this example. Maybe you've noticed it for yourself as Julie Bowen's cheeks go from soft and puffy to gaunt and sharp 11 seasons later for Modern Family. In Squid Game, her buckle fat appears to be a lot less and this could be a combination of camera angles, weight loss. Tell me she ain't top five of all time. You can't tell me anything. My swag is like no other. That shit is on a trillion or some shit. Like, that shit limitless. You can't, I'm, pff, unique ain't the word. So it's my word, but yeah. No bias, even though it may sound biased. I've seen a lot. I've seen extraterrestrial females, plea aliens, tall whites, insect toys, reptilians. I've seen it all. She top five of all time I've ever seen in life and afterlife and life after afterlife. They prove the past, present and future is all happening simultaneously. Even what I seen back then, back, back then in ancient Kemet, which you know is Egypt, I was Thoth. Today I'm Merlin, that's Celtic for Thoth. I think they think they thought they knew. But yeah, she's top five of all time. My first son gonna be named Itachi. With these, I definitely can do that. What? You gonna have the look I envisioned for him. <laughs> Let's continue. Loss, high contrast and color grading in post-production or what I would guess is a little bit of dehydration, which gives the cheek a hollower, almost starved look as the malar eminences or the cheekbones really start to pop. Obviously, this is a mature facial trait, the opposite of a neotenous facial feature, and we take number 67 a lot more seriously as a result. Compare this to her companion number 240, who is not only portrayed as a smaller, frailer girl with more neotenous and girlish features than, well, spoiler, we don't really expect her to do any of the cutthroat things that Sebiok does, and true to her character, she is a very passive person. These told you, her picture says a thousand words. Again, she's capable, she's competent, she's been through some shit. She got, the, got that masculine thing to her too, because she had to. But it says a bunch of things though, and it's like how she look is how I feel. You might not understand it, but... Yeah, she's she one of my favorite of all time, for sure. Like, she different. These casting decisions are very deliberate and complement the camera angles and acting personas that have been written up by the writers for every single character. When an actor is said to have the look that these casting directors are going for, these are the factors that these directors actually consider. Although a lot more subconsciously, I'm sure they're not calculating facial width to height ratios and comparing them to cephalometric standards. So, hopefully that clears up your burning questions of why Hoyun is so attractive, especially why the West is all of a sudden smitten by a model and new actor they would have never heard of before. Her on-screen persona as a dominant and capable woman also adds to- He said it. Capable. It says a million words. I ain't finna run it all down to you, I know what I know. Yeah. If I was over here, I'd have whooped his ass. I'd have hit his ass one, twice. Yeah, twice. Yeah, I'd have got him up out of here. You ain't gonna be touching my girl. You got me fucked up. She's somebody that'll come with me. What you doing? <laughs> to the appeal, and we've covered this on-screen influence in virtually every analysis of a and celebrity. And she got dipper. She... I love a female that's capable and she can dress her ass off. Go and look at her pictures, like how her fashion sense. It's different, bro. I be seeing, again, you know how I seen everything where you see everything here and a lot of shit is me. It's like, bro, I be, I still get wowzers looking at her shit sometimes. Like it's different. Like how he, she dress and all Like I appreciate that shit. Cause when I'm out here, I see a bunch of thoughts that's trying to dress like a, a, a Ari. What money bag yo went with? You know what the rappers go for, the females with the big ass and all. I don't care about that shit. I'm a different kind of nigga. I always been. I know what I need and opposed to what I want temporarily. At the end of the day, I want to go home to substance. 
Pretty, especially in the Ryan Gosling analysis. I'd have whooped his but ass for that. Understand that the way she is portrayed in Squid Acting Game is certainly not how what? she looks in reality. The lack of sleep, starved, and tired look, in a sense, adds to her attractiveness as a dangerous and alluring persona. But a lot of these episodes play up. Again, it says a thousand words. Numb. Competent. Dangerous. Smart. She know some shit you don't know. It says a, a bunch of things like how she look is how I feel by default. If I had a group of motherfuckers, she definitely somebody under my umbrella for sure. And I thought I ain't had no type. Come to find out, I do. This is perfectly my type, tailor made to me, down to a T. I wouldn't change nothing. This side of her facial appeal, especially with the example of her buckle fat and that dehydrated look in the series, with diffuse lighting to appear mature and serious. Compare this to when she's walking at a runway under harsh light. I be dehydrated in a motherfucker. I don't drink how I should. It's, again, it says a thousand words. And that's how I feel by default. By default. And she let him live too. That was arrogant in itself. Because me, I'd have pushed his ass and he would have got shot by the, by the thing. By the same time. Still was a good person though. Just keeping motherfuckers at bait. Got her little wall, bruh. I ain't even worried about Squid Game season two. When she left in season one, oh, I'm I left with her. I'm out too. Lighting, not, which not to say I ain't gonna watch it, but I ain't as interested. Makes it look a lot more rounded and juvenile. If you would like to get your facial aesthetic scientifically analyzed by our ace team of doctors and estheticians, much like we did in this video, then look no further than the Coos Aesthetic Report, where you can get your tailored analysis over at our website and get surgical and non-surgical feedback on where you can improve, how this affects the way you look through Photoshop morphs and learn how to emphasize your best features. As always, if you've enjoyed the video, please do like and subscribe and you can always leave your suggestions down in the comments below. Or oh, also check out the r slash coos studio subreddit. I actually read that a lot more than I read the comments to be fair. Alright, that's it for this video. That was quite interesting. Make sure you sleep with your mouth closed. <laughs> Proper tongue posture. Make sure Man, I feel sorry for people that that's that's ugly, bro. It's it's crazy, bro. You can never hope to even have nothing like that. And. Man, that's it for the video, bro. Don't forget to like the video if you like the video. Comment, share, subscribe, turn on post notifications. DM me the link via X. Let me know what you want me to react to next or what you want me to talk about. Follow me on Twitch, Kick, and Rumble. <sighs> yeah, you seen what's on my wall. She made an impact on my life in a positive way. For sure, because it ain't no thoughts on my wall. It's, I love BB too. She top five of all time as well. I love Vanity too, if you know who that is. And Prime Angelina Jolene. Yeah, my type's something else. I ain't gonna lie, it's different. It's no other. I'll see you on the next one, man. I'm out.